This is so in. 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 Food do you love, but it's a pain to eat? Spaghetti. Ooh, what's your favorite animal and why? Australian Shepherd, because I have one. Uh, if you could be a superhero, who would you be? I just saw the movie Wonder Woman. She's pretty badass, so I would go Wonder Woman. Oh, I'm giving you bonus points for that. <laughs> who do you go out of your way to be nice to? Everybody. I love that. Who would you want to be the narrator of your life? Jay Billis. What habit do you have now that you wish you'd had earlier in life? I eat healthier. What's the most ridiculous thing you've purchased? A car every other month. Okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a running joke. <laughs> How should toilet paper be hung, over or under? Oh, over. What's the worst thing you've eaten because you want to be polite? Asparagus. <laughs> I've never met an asparagus hater <laughs> who's always on your playlist. He's always a kid rock. When's the last time you laugh at something inappropriate? <laughs> Probably 10 minutes before I got here. <laughs>
My name is Bert Hodge. I'm the general manager of Heritage Ford. When I was a child, I stuttered and was dyslexic. I started my career assigned to a junior position on a destroyer, and ultimately I commanded five ships. Two minesweepers, two frigates, a SEAL commando ship. I got a lot of exposure to some of the world's greatest leaders. When I retired from the Navy, it was with the intent to join my father here at the dealership. My dad has been an important part of this community for 30 years. The business has changed tremendously since then, but our moral values have remained the same. This is a business where honor and integrity matter. If I'm fair to my customers, they'll come back. If I'm fair to myself, I'll be here when they come back. I'm proud to have served my country, and I'm proud to sell Fords to my community. Hope Southern Indiana began in 1964. It was the dream of three or four churches that really wanted to do something in the community. So they set aside their denominations so they could work together and really help the community. And in that period of time in 1964, churches really had barriers and boundaries of denominations. So Downtown Neighborhood Council was created um, as a first time ever church collaboration. That's how Hope Southern Indiana began. The mission and vision of Hope Southern Indiana is to reach the community that's underserved, underprivileged, marginalized in some way, um, form or fashion. So we do not discriminate whatsoever. We may be faith-based, but that doesn't mean we stop anyone at the door for any belief that they may have. We have sponsorships from many, many local churches, individuals, businesses, um, volunteers that actually volunteer here that actually help us as well. They range from monetary to gifts, to food, to uh, physical um, support whenever we need it, handing out um, baskets, making food baskets, decorating, wrapping gifts. So it's a long process. Christmas and Thanksgiving are a one day affair, but for us, it's a four month affair that is continual. As Dare to Care Liaison for Hope Southern Indiana, I have the direct link and contacts with um, the organization Dare to Care out of Louisville, Kentucky. They bring us all kinds of food from um, fresh produce, meats, all kinds of food, but we also get our government food, the USDA food from uh, ship from them as well, scheduled shipments from them. Clients will come and see me and I will help them out with their rent, utilities, birth certificates, general case management as needed. So typically how it works is a client will come and they will speak with a volunteer, make sure they have all their documentation, and then they will come and see me and I'll do the actual interview portion. So we'll go over their finances, their situation, just tell me a little bit about what's going on. And then that way I can give them other resources as needed. And I'll reach out to their utility provider or their landlord property manager and get the voucher over to them. I'm a board member of HOPE, of Southern Ministries, Southern Indiana Ministries. And uh, because of its location right across from the church, I became very interested into it and also, also the impact it had made into the community. And I know that uh, with connecting with them, uh, the church will also be uh, to doing some of the same things. I do not believe in duplicating what other uh, nonprofit organizations are doing. And so often that's what happened with the church and I've seen what Hope was doing. So I was trying to partner with them with uh, many aspects of what the church is about or about helping people, um, not only spiritually, but also physically and mentally. Every day that I work here, it's, it's fulfilling me spiritually, um, more than just my hands being of, of use to the community. It definitely is a two-way street. I, I tell several clients that I, that I see on a regular basis, I was, I was really looking forward to seeing you today, and you know that really has lifted me and carried me through my day. Um, and and, and the, it is returned with them. They have, when they're greeted positively, um, the payback is just overwhelming. And very often, you will hear a client walking away 
this is such a great place. That's what's so huge about it here is it's more than dollars in, dollars out, money in, money out. Um, but it's just getting people to where um, they get, can get back on their feet. They're heartbroken sometimes, a lot of times, and it's hard, but uh, we're here for them. So, and that's what I enjoy most about the job. Our staff at Hope Southern Indiana are, are like any other agency out there. They're kind, giving, loving people. But what does separate them apart from other agencies is their hearts are so big, they want to help. Our motto here is how can we help, not find out how we can't help. We want to help. We want to make a difference. We want to be there and give them support services. So whether it's prayer they need, whether it's food, whether it's rent assistance, uh, utility assistance, whatever that may be, our staff are dedicated to helping the families. Hello, my name is Jerry Cutter, president of Cutter Woodworking. Just want to share with you uh, where Cutter Woodworking is at today and why it is we think it might be helpful for you to consider Cutter Woodworking as a place and being part of our team. Uh, we're excited to be the second generation. Uh, parents started a company in 1959 in the basement of the house here on the property that we're currently uh, uh, sitting. We have approximately 330 team members. Many have been with us for decades. Uh, many are neighbors and we are very excited and proud of that. We uh, feel like this could be a place for those of you that's never considered uh, looking outside of New Albany, Clarksville, Louisville. We would love for you to consider cut woodworking as a place of work and not only to have a job or to get a paycheck, but to be part of our team. We're very excited, we're very proud of what we have here at Cutter Woodworking and would love to share that with you and see the opportunities and where it is that not only the company is going, but where you can go as well. We would certainly appreciate the opportunity to have you come and visit and take a day and just understand what opportunities lie possibly in your future. Lifespan Resources is the local area on agency for Scott, Harrison, Clark, and Floyd counties. Uh, our biggest program is the Age and Disabled Waiver Program, which provides in-home services to the age and disabled community to allow them to remain in their homes and out of long-term facility placement. By the year 2030, uh, one in five Americans will be age 65 and older. And so with the population increasing and the aging population increasing, comes the need for more long-term health goals and community-based services. And so that's where Lifespan comes into play. Uh, we provide information for those who are new to the Medicare program. We like to advocate for the Medicare Savings Program. So if you are interested or have any questions about whether you can qualify for that, it's a great program, it doesn't have any downsides, we encourage you to call in to our ADRC and speak with an options counselor. Um, for those who have needs, if you're finding it difficult to do your activities of daily living, if you're finding walking, becoming increasingly difficult or being able to get out to doctor's appointments or even to the grocery store. We have a great Rides to Go program where we are providing transportation to the aged and disabled community. So any needs you have uh, or questions that you have, our options counselors are very knowledgeable on community-based resources. So even if we can't help you here at Lifespan, we like to point people in the right direction. So we encourage you to call and ask with any questions or concerns that you might have. Since our humble beginnings in 1908 as New Washington State Bank, we have offered banking the way you want it. 
Now known as NWSB, we have branches in the communities of Henryville, Charlestown, Borden, Jeffersonville, Sellersburg, Scottsburg, River Ridge, New Albany, and coming in 2022, a state-of-the-art branch in downtown Jeffersonville. As a local bank, all decisions are made right here in Southern Indiana. Our customers enjoy the personal relationships and we value opportunities to show community support throughout the region. At NWSB, we offer myriad services and modern technology, from online banking to mobile apps with check capture. And we are always here to serve you face-to-face -face with a smile. At NWSB, you'll find banking the way you want it. I'm Julie Taylor Kincaid. And I'm Les Kincaid. And this is our store, Kincaid Jewelers. We opened our store in January of 2021. We work together uh, in the retail business and with four others. And with COVID, we um, decided to get out of Louisville and came on our side of the river and thought this would be a great adventure. This is our first retail mm -hmm. establishment together. Yes. And it's been a great adventure for sure. Personally, I'm second generation. My parents had a jewelry store in Tacoma, Washington, so the other, the other coast. My dad was a bench jeweler and manufacturing, and I started with him when I was 13, so 1963. That's been a long time. <laughs> And for me, this um, I started out working part-time in 1986 86. and just grew to love the business and went into full-time work and have been doing this for 33 years. I believe we're known for our custom work and helping customers reimagine their jewelry, uh, giving it new life in a second generation and creating heirlooms for them to pass down. It's generally a mix of different stones, even uh, types of stones, certainly different sizes, uh, yellow or white gold, whatever. And they want to see what they can incorporate, how they can incorporate those heritage pieces in one or more pieces that they can wear today with the memories of their grandparents, their moms, and their dads. Seeing their faces yeah. when they pick it up, it will either be squeals of elation <laughs> or tears of joy. Yeah. So that makes our job worth every blood, sweat, and tear we put into it. <laughs> it's truly amazing, especially when when somebody goes and can't say anything, it's, wow, it's just, it's special. This area has just uh, tremendous people, great reception. Um, we haven't met a bad person yet. <laughs> Lovely group of people. Oh, really? Um, people needing different choices, for jewelry, it's a dying mm -hmm. art to have a jeweler, especially a second generation jeweler. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot left. Many have closed their doors and we are just so happy to be here to provide another option for people. Yeah. But as far as when you're talking to your clients, they're giving you clues and a lot of times they don't even know. So you're you're trying to interpret how can I incorporate how they feel into the, each individual piece, and oh, it's that's where the the fun comes in in designing, and it truly makes it a one of a kind, um, and that's what makes it special to them. 
it is a passion that we take very serious mm -hmm. because we know that jewelry is so personal to each person, whether it's an anniversary, a birthday, um, an engagement, it's so very personal. So to be a part of their story is just exciting for us. That's why we get up and open our doors every day. We offer quite a variety, first of all, of style, color, uniqueness that people are constantly commenting on. Oh, we don't see this somewhere else. So. We have a price point for everyone that comes in the door. If you want to spend $50 or under, up to 50000 we have a price point for you. We love colored stones. We love unusual colored stones. So that's kind of a um, passion that we look for the unusual, something that you're not going to see in every other store. So um, we just feel really proud of our small boutique and the selection that we have selected for everyone in the community to come and see. It's a little bit of who we are, uh, the jewelry that we select. Our bridal is so fun to work with uh, new grooms or new fiancés coming in. And we offer um, semi-mounts as well as um, already put together engagement rings. You can choose your loose stone or choose your mounting or we can custom make something for you. So we want to do it however the person sees that they want to build their story with their fiance. Mm -hmm. We do wedding bands, anniversary bands. We cover the bridal, everything from engagement to the 50th anniversary. It's just a really special area of our business that we love. Many people bring in pictures and they would like, well, can you do this with this ring and put them, put things together, change the designs? That makes it special to them. And a good number of the wedding rings that we sell is how that happens. So, yeah, special, special. So we specialize in special. <laughs>
Um, and so while other people were just doing, you know, basic baseline meal prep, uh, I kind of wanted to tie back my culinary experience to uh, just making it healthier and making it look pretty. Uh, so I'd post my food on uh, my social media and uh, you get enough people saying, oh, that looks awesome. I would pay you to do that. Um, and then you kind of think, maybe I should do this on the side, you know? And so I started doing that and it kind of snowballed. And by the time I got all of these uh, orders, you know, people wanted to keep telling their friends and, you know, my house was just full of meals every single weekend. Um, so I kind of had to take a step back and think, you know, maybe I want to jump into this full time. Uh, and so I left my nine to five job and uh, it kind of snowballed from there. My husband has a full time job as well, so he kind of, took the role of the main breadwinner so that I could go into this. So he's kind of my number one fan and my number one supporter. Um, and when we first started, we wanted to just go all in. We wanted to find a place to lease out and kind of, you know, just put all, all of it in there. Um, and we quickly learned that that was not a smart thing to do. You know, we went through so many different plans, you know, even just to get financing for this place and just to, kind of be willing to adapt and change even through COVID, you know, like the pandemic. Luckily, our business model was set up to where we didn't have to adjust very much for our business, but um, we actually thrived in that because, uh, you know, we introduced home delivery because most people weren't going out to eat. And, you know, most of our meals you pick up and go and reheat later anyway. So you're not like sitting down in a restaurant or anything like that. Most people know us for our meal prep. Um, and most of our meals are, um, they change every week. We have usually eight options. Um, so it's usually two breakfast options um, and then six that can kind of interchange between lunch and dinner. And then we also do our own house-made snacks. So we do protein donuts and uh, these energy balls and things like that, uh, just so people can have a healthier snack. And all of our stuff is made in-house. We don't uh, use any processed foods or anything like that. We make all of our sauces, vinaigrettes, uh, everything from scratch so you know exactly what goes into it and uh, makes it easy for us to modify things. So all of our meals, they may not always be gluten-free, but we can modify them for those people that need gluten-free meals or vegetarian meals, low-carb meals, stuff like that. I think one of the most rewarding things is uh, being able to get to know our customers. We're very fortunate to have, uh, you know, we've been around almost three years and we have people that have been with us since the beginning. Uh, you know, so when we do 800 to 900 meals a week, having the same people come back uh, week after week after week, uh, you know, it's, it says something, you know, it says that, hey, we can, our food is good uh, and getting to know people. Uh, we've got, you know, customers that we've seen their children grow up and, you know, we've seen them switch jobs and just, people aren't just an order number to us.